the Orlando bubble has yet to officially commence, but the NBA is discussing plans for a second bubble. For a report from our Jackie McMullen, the Chicago bubble would be for the eight teams that weren't invited to play in Florida, enabling them participation in a mini training camp and games with a target date of September. But meanwhile, there's teams actually set to play in Orlando that are just struggling to get there. The Clippers shut down their practice facility yesterday as a precaution after someone expected to travel with the team to Orlando tested positive for the coronavirus. The closure came a day after the league's third round of testing. We now welcome in our reporter Malika Andrews who is inside the Orlando bubble which I believe is just a hotel. We're curious uh, Malika what the <laughs> process is like. What steps did you have to go through to get into the bubble? Yeah, also yesterday we moved from, my producer and I moved from the hotel we had been staying at with NBA personnel officially into the hotel where we will be for the duration of uh, this restart of the NBA season. And so we got off of the bus, we moved our luggage inside and left it into the lobby. There were little bags with everyone's names on it where you reached in and got out a magic band. Um, and this green bracelet was given to me just to signify that now I am officially in quarantine. So after going to get tested yesterday, which was just one swab up one nostril, one swab up the other nostril, and one swab down the throat, I was have been confined to my room. I get the meals delivered outside the door three times a day um, at 8 a.m., at noon, and at 6 p.m., and it's a whole assortment of things. And this is where I will be in my room for the next four days. And this is very similar to what players will be going through. So for us, our quarantine lasts a week because we won't we, we have traveled here commercially. Uh, players, their quarantine is going to last just a couple of days because they will have traveled on private planes. But I want to make something really clear, Elle, because I've seen a lot of people saying things like, well, this is similar to prison. How can you lock people up like this? Prisoners would feel lucky to be treated the way that we have been treated as we have gotten into this bubble. So I just, the NBA really has gone above and beyond to try to make us feel safe. Um, but this is where I will be staying for the next couple of days until they lift that quarantine on Monday. I was going to say, they're doing it for your own protection. So yeah, this idea that it's somehow like prison exactly. is laughable and, and probably coming from people that have never been inside of a prison. Malika, all of the teams are dealing with so much, leaving their families, the pandemic, social injustice. J.J. Reddick spoke about these uncertain times just a few minutes ago. What did he have to say? Yeah, I mean, L. J.J. talked about the fact that he never really considered not playing. He said he felt a responsibility to his team. He felt a responsibility to the league. And he also felt a responsibility to the young guys who are trying to make their livelihood, is what he said. But then he went on to say that really the only difficult thing for him is the fact that he wants to absolutely make sure social justice causes are front and center. But do not take that as being comfortable with this decision. Take a listen. So to say that we have like any sort of comfort level would be a lie. There is no comfort level. We're, we're not with our families. We're not at our homes. We're isolated in a bubble in the middle of a hot spot in the middle of Florida while there's social unrest going on in the country and we're three months away from potentially the most important election in our lifetimes. Now we have to figure out a way to perform and play basketball and all that because I do believe it is the right thing to go and play, but there is absolutely no comfort, no. And JJ said that yes, he is going to be coming down here from a basketball perspective. He is now back in the gym. He's able to work out, but it's different. He said that he's not really able to interface with his teammates. He's been living with Drew Holiday since he got back to New Orleans because his lease is up. But he really just wants to make sure that people understand the sacrifice that is being made to restart the NBA season. There certainly is one being made. We're going to actually keep talking about Red Egg Zion and the Pelicans. Brian Windhorst will join us on the show about the unique opportunity that has presented themselves for those Pelicans. Malika Andrews joining us from her own personal bubble in the Orlando bubble. Thanks, Malika. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.